Games, this is Asvardul, and welcome to another exciting episode of my game development live stream. Today, once again, we're working on Sarah the Shield Mage, a Eastern style RPG, and I am also testing out a application for Android called TChat, um, which may help me actually be able to uh, view chat with um, while working with a single screen. Um, Again, hopefully a situation I hope to uh, resolve sometime soon. Um, as always, I like to start with uh, what I've been working on the previous week, um, and today will be no different. Um, go ahead and see scenes. Go ahead and save save what I'm working on there. Um, I'm going to get to what I'm working on there in just a moment. But um, yeah, so um, as you can see, I was hard at work on the church. I've got the altar. It's really just a counter. Some uh, bookshelves that I'm going to be uh, filling with um, stacks of books. And uh, these candelabras that actually um, produce uh, reasonable flames. Yeah, see? So if I run the scene, yeah, we've also got a NPC right here. Um, I need to extend its uh, tech uh, top box. Um, so what's going on here is that uh, Davis is actually dead, but um, when I advance the dialogue, he's going to be um, restored to full health. And if I uh, enter my thing, yeah, you can see he's at full. Actually, let me prove to you he's actually dead first. I, I jumped ahead a little bit. My bad. Crap. Let's try that again. First, I need to prove to you that he's actually dead. So uh, let's go over here. Uh, yeah, see Davis, 0 of 12 hit points. Go through the text. He's alive. So yeah, I've got the, uh, what I'm calling the priest script um, completed. I've got some nice fire effects that um, I've lifted from the first fantasy for mobile um, asset framework. Um, I'm actually um, working on lifting a, a couple of useful things. Um, there's things like um, like barrels. Let me actually uh, let me find the barrel in question. Did I not include it? I could have sworn I did. Oh, third party. That's what I did with it. So there's this wonderful sealed barrel. Yeah, it looks good, doesn't it? Yeah, I didn't do that. That's that's beyond me. But I'm going to be studying the art style um, a little bit and learning how to um, how to make assets that look um, more like this. Um, but that's going to be down the road in the polish phase. I've really taken long enough um, as it is. Um, one other thing I've done too is I have. Um, created a church uh, locale uh, piece of data um, and that's what I'm using to populate the church now obviously you could see uh, basement one here is not um, filling up and that's because I haven't um, actually created anything for it and uh, yeah that that triggers a little wide I'm gonna have to do something about that so yeah, um, that's one of the things I've been working on over the past two weeks. Um, uh, this last week, uh, what has been going on is I've taken a break. Um, I really needed to take a break in the first place. So um, so yeah, uh, it, it, it's been good, but that gets to um, what I had up um, when I when I would um, just logged in. Um, one of the problems is that um, it's been really hard making maps. Um, it's been extremely time consuming, extremely irritating. Um, it's been one of those painful things that has actually managed to injure my uh, enjoyment of creating 
Sarah the Shield Mage. And this was something that happened in the hero's journey a little bit too, but it was a little bit easier because I was mostly faking 2D, so my maps on average were quite small. Um, the thing is, uh, in uh, Sarah the Shield Mage, um, I have to be a little bit more careful and put a little bit more work into each map because the map is explorable um, in re really two dimensions. Really when it came to, even though the Hero's Journey maps were explorable in two dimensions because you could jump, um, it was a limited thing. There was a limit to how high you could jump and therefore a uh, relatively short limit to how much I actually had to create. Uh, but that's not the case in Sarah the Shield Mage. So I, I started taking my break. Um, I'd got to about Tuesday when I was like, you know what, this making tiles like like in Solomaria Woods for one thing, you know, this making tiles, this is beating the crap out of me. You know, what am I gonna do about this? And I, I was just thinking and thinking, and then it eventually came to me, you know, Andrew, play your strengths, write code. So that's what I did. Um, I've got here a working floor generator. So you see I've got, um, let me go ahead and set sand top as my uh, texture, wherever it is, I've got way too much. When I included that first fantasy for mobile um, asset, you know, stuff got whack. So if I generate floor, it's all of a sudden not working. No, it's working. Never mind. So yeah, that's uh, that's a thing. Um, yeah, I can produce uh, floors as wide or tall as I want. Um, there's some issues with it, like if I try to crap. I'm used to right clicking on the object. If I do delete floor. I keep on having to do delete floor until um, until everything is. Uh, gone and that's something that I might um, I might consider solving oh, it's a unity exception didn't realize it was throwing that but um, that might be something I solve on camera actually but yeah right now um, what I'm actually working on and what I'd like to join you all with tonight is I'm working on um, the wall generator uh, test object um, it, it's following that same thing I'm trying to find ways so that I can speed up the velocity um, at which I'm creating things in Sarah the Shield Mage. I've still got quite a few things um, to build in the game. And really looking at it, it was sort of a, a soul-crushing experience. And, you know, that's not why I started writing Sarah the Shield Mage. I didn't write it to crush my soul. I wrote it to make an awesome Eastern RPG like what I played when I was growing up. I want to share that with, uh, with the next generation of gamer, and that's what I'm going to do. So uh, enough talking about the why. Let's talk about the how a little bit. Um, so right now I'm working on this handy dandy wall generator script. Um, it's got a series of wall shapes. You can either make a room, which means it has fully enclosed, it's fully enclosed. Um, this is just spawning game objects, so I can go in and delete key objects as I want in order to get a certain thing, like if I want to make a doorway or something. I just trim out the uh, right number, the right blocks in the right places. Uh, there's a straight long haul and a straight wide haul. Straight long haul um, goes sort of forward from a lower Z coordinate to a higher Z coordinate. And then a straight wide wall does the same thing, just from a lower X coordinate to a low, to a higher Y coordinate. So that's, that's sort of how I'm automating um, this generation. Uh, the, the wall generator script itself uh, has a number of parameters. Um, most of these are self-explanatory. I'm not gonna um, insult you guys' intelligence by uh, by explaining them because they explain themselves. Um, I might not need this, but we'll see. So yeah, um, what I'm working on right now. So if I try. Uh, try generating walls yeah you're seeing how nothing is happening um, one of the things I was doing is writing um, debug messages because uh, I want to find out why nothing is happening so um, it's obvious what I've uh, so far found is I'm uh, correctly determining the wall shape I'm correctly switching uh, to the right series of methods 
I'm getting uh, this far. However, it's like when I get, I've created some debug messages within these for loops that are going through and generating um, positions for the new tiles and then spawning them at those positions and uh, removing clone from the name. Um, yeah, that's, for some reason, this logic isn't firing. And I want to find out if that's because... Um, if that's because one of these loops isn't um, isn't actually doing anything, I, I don't really know what's going on. It's kind of strange. So um, let's keep writing some debug code. Diagnosing the problem is the first step to fixing it. Because if you don't know you have a problem, you can't go to a 12-step program. So um, how... Actually, I want to go ahead and extract that to string. String. Do a string dot format. So uh, instead of doing a whole bunch of string concatenation, one thing that you can do in uh, C sharp is there's a wonderful method off of string called string.format where you just enter um, like a number between curly braces and then in one of these arguments that comes after you can um, you can specify something that will get rendered into the string without you having to do any extra concatenation it's one of um, it's one of the one of the bread and butter uh, things in C sharp that you absolutely should know so what I'm going to do is that. So uh, with luck, this depth message will be how many rows of tiles will be generated and something not zero. Actually, you know what? Good point. Let me see if this uh, application is uh, detecting any activity on my Twitch stream. Doesn't look like it is. Maybe that's because nothing is actually happening. Wouldn't doubt it. Hey chat, if you think I'm a nerd, say as Vardual is a nerd in chat. If you're seeing this on Facebook later on, like in the future, eh, please don't, maybe? I don't know. Okay, so let's run it. Let's see what's going on. Zero point five to negative 2.5. Negative 3 row? Oh, that's a problem. Okay. That's interesting. Offset dot Huh. Really? Did it that way? Oh, I offset from the offset. That's what I that's what I'm doing wrong, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so I've got a little bit of rewriting to do, just just a smidgen. Okay, so don't need this debug message anymore. That's really not helping.
to equal zero. So what's going to be it's going to be actually no. Yeah, okay. I've got it. I'm going to go ahead and compute the z-coordinate first, I think. Um, I was trying to do this off-camera, actually, because to me this is some of the uh, some of the boring stuff, and I would wanted to show you guys like some really, really, some awesome wall-generate foo and then be working on a dungeon or something, but that's not what happened, but it's okay. Um, let's see. Am I a nerd yet? Nope. I am apparently not a nerd. Huh. But I seem to be in my own um, chat list a few times. I have to check on that. Might be just a bug with the um, the application. So I probably need to go ahead and do that same thing on all of these. That's a logic bug waiting to happen. So I guess while I'm working on this, it's a good time to uh, actually talk about some of uh, some of what I'm doing with Sarah the Shield Mage going forward. So uh, yeah, one of the things that I really have been thinking about with this game is just been the uh, the lack of uh, momentum I've had. I mean, it's like I've created like cool feature after cool feature, but nothing has been quite materializing, and that sort of bothers me. I was um, one of the things I actually did was um, I've abandoned my um, my kanban board. Oh, well, not I haven't abandoned my kanban board. I abandoned um, the Solumaria Wood story for the time being. Because I'm, I'm. What I'm really thinking is that I need to go ahead and um, to go ahead and actually like produce a demo. Because I haven't, um, haven't produced a demo in quite some time. It's been like two or three months now, and that's a really long time for me. And I'll be honest, I don't like it. I, I think. Um, I think if I'm sort of the way I look at it as a one-man band indie, um, pretty much you need to be putting out a small incremental demo. I'd say at least every every month, every month and a half, if it's a long-running project, um, at the very least. I used to I used to do a small demo every week, but it just got um, it's really ridiculous um, after a time. Um, let's see.
That's a logic bug. No, not like that. So yeah, um, what I'm working on doing right now is just trying to trying to go ahead and put together um, a bunch of material for what my demo is going to be. Because, uh, I mean, all this technology is great. Showing it on these live streams is beyond awesome, right? Um, and I love doing it for you guys. And it's not going to stop anytime soon if I have my way about it. But, um, yeah, it, it doesn't change the fact that there is not a lot of game happening. But a lot of game being worked on, and that's sort of a red flag. So, um, for for those of you... Oh, hey, there we go! Oh. That's awkward. Oh, uh, okay, so it produced things. That's a start. Um, doesn't look like the back walls actually generated looks like the side walls generated properly this looks like the near wall that is the near wall looks like the far wall is MIA uh, These side walls here generated way too close together. They should be generating about two, three, four, five. It should be over here about where this guy is. So uh, the great thing about this is I can just delete it and uh, regenerate. Oh, and while I'm at it, kill my um, debug messages because those are no longer necessary. I say right now. My experience with debug messages in my um, in my day job is it's like you you use them. Eventually, you get like a code review saying, "Hey, remove your debug messages. They're not necessary anymore." So you do, and then a couple months later, you're working on something else when you horribly break and mangle your application where you're like, dang, if only I still had those debug messages, I'd be able to know it. And uh, before anyone says, you know, run your unit test, yes, we do run our unit tests, but, our, but pretty much what the unit tests do is they tell you, again, that a problem exists, not necessarily um, information about the problem that, you know, helps you solve it uh, in, a, in a short amount of time. Right, so... see. Aha, uh -huh, that's why. Um, that's why. Let's go ahead and try uh, generate walls. Okay, not bad, not bad at all. Now some of the math that the application is using to generate these seems a little wonky to me, but um, we'll make it work. So, That's part of the wonkiness. It's part of the wonkiness right there. That is actually not part of the wonkiness. I want it to go up to a height. So if I say make it two tiles tall, two, yeah, that's right, because I want a layer at zero then I want a layer at one, then I want a layer at two. I want it to include, to be zero inclusive. 
So, um, so that's correct. Let's see what we've got here. This bit of the logic here is um, is getting interesting. Pretty much, I need to go ahead and scrap that for right now. So let's see what we've got. Okay. So the actual Z in this case, um, what's going on with the sidewalls is um, I have the concept in here of a cap, pretty much. And that's what differentiates a hall from a room, is that, well, halls are capped and rooms aren't. Um, let me see. Now, what I'm not seeing... Okay, so there's a couple pieces to this. So if I'm extending it to the edges, okay, I'm going to need min x, but it's going to be wall dimensions. It's going to be offset. Set dot Z. Plus one. Z plus one. Yeah, like so. So that'll stop it from um, that'll stop the uh, the f uh, forward most part of the side wall from clipping into the um, from clipping into the near cap. And then what I want to do is do a max Z. Now that might seem a little weird to you, to you guys, but pretty much what's going on with it is um, I want to if if I'm extending to the edges, I can just use the wall dimensions. If I'm not, um, I want to account for both the near tile and the far tile being omitted from the sidewalls. So that's what's going on with that. Then. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and nuke all these. Once again. And regenerate. Okay, so it is sort of getting closer a little bit. Um, the near and far wall aren't getting up as high as they should be, and it looks like they're actually reversed. That's kind of troubling. The side walls are getting up to the uh, correct height. So, so that right there should get the walls up to their correct height. 
Let's delete and regenerate. Okay. So there we go. Wait a second. Uh, let's see. Z. Yeah, that's sort of backwards. And yeah. So far wall and near wall, we're generating a little bit too wide. So that so this should fix that problem. Or not. Try one more time just to make sure I'm not crazy. Yeah, okay, that fixed that problem. So, it looks like if I try moving these, there are some cases of duplication, but only right there. It looks like this near wall. Yeah, the near wall and the far wall are getting mixed up. It looks like the signs just need to be reversed. Okay. So yeah, that's that part's good. Uh, what I'm concerned now is that the far wall isn't quite far enough. Um, either it's not quite, well, no, it's not quite far enough. Go ahead and delete these, regenerate. Huh, that's even worse. I think maybe I want to flip this sign. Okay, so that's a little better. It's a little better. We're at least in in the realm of of something resembling logic now. I don't have so much doubles, but we do have a misbehaving sidewall. So let's go ahead and let's try the offset minus one trick. Darn, that actually, well, that showed me a problem that I didn't know I had, and that's that the um, signs got flipped again. Now, there's some uh, mathematical problems with this, too. Um, should be working within the bounds of... Um, 
within the bounds I'm giving it without having to do any weird offsets. So yeah, this is uh, generating. Yeah, this is the correct generation. So if I uh, if I generate a floor, yeah, there you go. I have a whole bunch of sand in a room. This is what I was going for the whole time. Um, so that may make life a little bit easier, but you know. Let's go ahead and expand our test case a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and do a five by five and make this seven by seven. You know, just a, a plus one case. Will my assertions hold up? Okay, so it looks like it will, but let's see. Okay, looks good. Let's try even numbers now. Tester. Ha <laughs> ha, it exploded. What's more, like all of these are sort of are off like okay, the far wall. Okay, the near wall and the left wall are perfect. The far wall and the right wall are just wrong. Just completely wrong. Okay, so let's uh let's look to this for inspiration. Okay, so I've copied the determine offset code, which is producing a negative number. The sidewall's uh, Z progression is just fine. That's not a problem. This bit right here, though, that's the problem. If I were working in, um, if I were working in odd numbers, this would this would be holding up. In fact, it was. So I think what I have to do actually is two is greater than zero. Like so. And then I'll need to do something similar with generating the far wall. I'm going to go ahead and keep the um, keep the generated floor because all I'm concerned about is this wall. Excuse me. Okay, a little bit better. It looks like it's now off by a full tile on both of those. So I could probably do plus one, plus one, 
plus one plus one fix. All right, here we go. Will it work? Yes, it will. Okay, so we know it works on uh, with a 4x4 four four floor. What about a 6x6 six six floor? One second. I hear trouble stirring. Thank God for cell phones. Okay. But yeah, it looks like the uh, the floor generated. Actually, that reminds me. Has anyone said anything on Twitch yet? Huh. Let's see who the full list of users is. Oh, hey there, Sidewinder0010. How's it going? Um, you happen to be in this application's uh, chat list twice, and I happen to be in it six times. So I'm going to just go on a limb and say uh, tchat's uh, user list is somewhat broken. Just somewhat. Um, that's not really important to this room generator. Okay. So I think that works. Um... Actually, one other thing I haven't tested. Let's see if the delete walls thing. That's weird. Yeah, check that out. And then... Yeah, so it's taking forever to uh, delete through the right click. Right, so uh, generated tiles. See, what I'm thinking I'm going to want to do is um, thinking I'm going to want to to delete tiles. So I think what I should do on both of these generator scripts is have like a list of generated tiles initialize it every time I add a tile add it to this list And then my deletion process will pretty much be going through the list and um, destroying each object. See if that works. Cool. Doesn't really do anything. Mesga, mesge, mesge, blessings, gay, blessings, a, oh, mayonnaise.
Ah, oh, that's a problem. Let's try making that static. And regenerate. Then degenerate. Okay, that's what I need to do. That's easy. Uh, let's see, systems collections generic. Yeah, there we go. That way I have lists. Yeah, that should be good. And put that there to match the other script. A little bit less cognitive load for me. It's always helpful. And get rid of my debug message. Let's see what we got. Let it compile though. Generate, generate, yes, I've never been so happy to see game objects properly disappear. This is going to save me a little bit of time on developing the game. Check these. So I guess the next thing, um, go ahead and say straight long haul. Let's go ahead and say two. Generate. How about we make it four? Generate. That's a straight long haul. And it's eight tiles wide. Okay. What about a straight wide hall that's uh, four tiles wide and eight tiles long? Okay, that's correct. What if we make it put the things in the right proportion, though? There we go. Wall generator works. It truly works. It works. I'm happy. All, all that crushing of my soul that, you know, just felt like not a whole lot's been happening on the game. Well, no, that's turning around now. Got a wall generator working. I, I can see my product my productivity improving right now. Sidewinder 0010. Oh hey there. Uh, yeah, I, I can actually see your message on this teacher application. Uh, good luck with taking your keyboard apart. Um, I hope that works out well for you, bro. Yeah, this is this isn't an entirely. Uh, useless application. Um, its users list is broken and it'll be serviceable enough for me to, uh, to keep an eye on chat and see what's happening. 
Yeah, it's like every time I hit the button, um, it's just re-adding um, entries. I think what what's what's wrong with TChat's um, user list is they're not clearing their um, their list of users before they uh, reallocate. Yeah, and there, it's also picking up the uh, the host as if uh, the host was a guest, but well. That's not important. What's important is I can see chat. What's important is the room generators are working, you know? This this is good. We're off to a good start tonight. I've got 30 minutes left in the broadcast. Holy crap. Um, okay. Right. Ruins of Feldhold. Cool dungeon, right? Well, about that. Uh, let's see. Battle tile is fine. This is gonna take, okay. That didn't take as long as I thought. Sarah, map GUI controller, and my ambassador. Okay, we're set. Actually, is Davis, yeah, Davis is alive. Okay. Right. So we're gonna start actually using this floor generator here. Um, okay. So I'm going to create a object. Stone block floros. No, stone block floors. Stone block walls. I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay, this is where magic is going to happen. So, first thing I need to do is go ahead and set up mesh combiners, because pretty much the way this is going to work at, is as I complete a span of the dungeon, I'm going to take its blocks and I'm going to copy them as children of this super object instead of um, of the of the generator which will then free me up to um, generate another set of blocks and then when I'm done I'll just de delete the um, I'll just delete the thing where's my rocks there's my rocks that's ceiling. Oh, there's my rocks. Okay.
Minor. Okay. Then I'll get my. I'll get the walls going. Walls, block floors. All right. So that's good. Oh, and I have to do all this again for these other ones, but eh, that's okay. That's as I wanted. This middle. Rocks top. All right. So there we go. That's my 3D tile generator going. Right, so the first thing I'm going to need to do is produce a hallway. That's where this comes in. Where's my rocks? Keep coming back to that question. Ah, there they are. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a hallway. Let's see, it's going to be about four wide, six long. It's going to be two by six. Generate. Generate. Okay. And this is what I was saying about being able to go ahead and uh, take things and um, and mess with them. So, yoink. I'll take the, actually, you know what? That's not right. That's not right. Needs to be like that. Generate. Uh, really? Put the right things in, didn't I? No? I could have sworn I did. Five. Six. Oh, it's not working right. Holy heck. Okay, so you I'm still not happy with that. My wall generator isn't fixed. Wall generator has problems. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and generate a. J. 
generate a floor. And I'll take all the blocks, displace them down. There we go. Then go ahead and generate an incorrectly sized incorrectly sized and incorrectly offset um, floor. Why not? still not as tedious as having to um, to manually set each tile uh, um, where has my crosshairs gone? Looks like I'll have to restart Unity. I seem to have glitched my graphics. Hey, Unity Tech, are you watching? Actually, um, I put in an application to Unity Tech uh, just on Friday. They have an opening. They have some openings in Austin, Texas, for programmers with. Uh, with my particular skill set, so uh, that would be really cool to work for Unity. Definitely something to look forward to. Now, whether I'll actually be hired or not, that's another question entirely, but a uh, man can dream. Okay, so I think that span is uh, able to be set. <clears throat> so then next I need to take these two things. Actually, I need to go ahead and set them at negative one. Thinking this next room is going to be a seven by seven room. Excuse me a sec. Okay, all better. Sarah is at zero, zero, which means both of these sort of offset. Those aren't offset. Uh, that is, though. Well, I can counter it by offsetting Sarah. Go. And offset the light a little bit. Fortunately, this will be a one-time only sort of thing. Okay. So we've got this um do five five okay. Cool. We're synchronized now. 
All right, so this needs to be about a seven by seven floor. It's thought of as um, as I was expecting. So that's, that's okay for now. Let's try the walls. Seven by seven, so we need a good old nine by nine. Yeah, should be good. Generate. No, no, no. It's going to be sort of a room structure. Let's try again. Generate. Uh, although, tell you what. Uh, let's see. That can be deleted. That can be deleted. Those can be deleted. Then the rest of these, uh, the rest of these blocks just fit. Just snap right on. Generated an extra block. That's interesting. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. Actually, you know what? Put it way up here. I've got plans for it, but not for the start of the game. So, what I'm thinking, um, as far as the game is concerned, is Sarah is a sort of an adventure archaeologist for the uh, Order of the Luminescent Shield. Actually, let me delete that right quick. What did I just delete? Thank God I didn't delete that. So she's a sort of an archaeologist for the Order of the Luminescent Shield, and the way this game is going to start is um, through years of, of painstaking research, um, she has found a religious artifact that will prove the existence of this world's goddess. Um, she is going to the Feldhold ruins in the start of the game, uh, in order to retrieve said object and bring it back, um, if it exists at all, and pretty much make the religious find of the century. It will massively boost the church's um, respect and everything, and everyone will love, and uh, it'll 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 be great. This crazy doomsday cult running around doing bad things will be completely blindsided by uh, by the by the discovery of such an artifact. It'll help restore order, cure cancer, and give everyone in the world puppies. Because who doesn't love puppies? Um, actually, I don't. I like I like cats better, but that's just me. Okay. 
Okay, so I think this span can be added. Same with that span. So that's pretty much how this is going to work with um, the scene generator here. Is that you get an object. You put your objects in the scene. You generate something make the necessary modifications, move everything out to the, um, to the mesh batch object, and then scoot this object along and sort of leapfrog um, as you develop, the, as you develop um, more parts of, um, of, this, of this level. And this, I'm going to be do six five. The wall generator is significantly less um, less stable than I would like. Yeah, see what I mean. I'm going to have to be doing some code um, to solve that. OK. So yeah. So we're just going to start the game off with just a, a long, narrow hallway to start with. You know, just give the player this room right here with no random encounters, no, no advanced anything to learn the game. That's all I want the player doing in this room. I want them to learn the basic controls. That's all they need to do. This is the simplest part of the game right here. It's about 10 o'clock, so I'm close to uh, ending my broadcast for the night. Um, going ahead and looking at um, chat right now. Uh, so uh, before before I uh, turn, off, turn off my uh, broadcast for the night, are there, is there any uh, questions, anything you want to see, any uh, Anything that you would you would like to hear about this game that would uh, that would be of interest to you? I guess I'll find out in about thirty seconds if um, if keyboards are repaired by now. Alternatively, if you're watching in the future on my YouTube channel, the Asvardo Project. Um, yeah, just leave me a note there, and uh, I can uh, I can totally answer. Um, yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty close, and I think. Um, let's see, I think Sidewinder 0010 is uh, may still be repairing his keyboard, and so that's okay. Um, yeah, you can always call, you can always get me at. Um, YouTube.com slash the Asvardual Project. Um, I I'm very active in responding to my uh, video comments. So if you uh, if you write me a note, um, I will almost certainly see it within a day. And uh, if it's something I would answer, I will. Um, if not.
Hey. There you go. Yeah, if not, um, well, that's a great time to end the broadcast. Yes, yeah, so um, what I'm going to be doing over the next two weeks, um, I think this week, this, this coming week, I'm not going to be working heavily on the game. Um, I did sort of have some soul-crushing experiences with it, and uh, I think it would be a good idea for me to take some time and and get reinvigorated because I want to finish this project. Um, so I think Sarah, the, the whole idea of Sarah the Shield Mage getting to sort of play this adventure archaeologist who sort of sheds light on what the mysterious waif in your typical JRPG story is doing while she's being mysterious. Um, I think it's a I think it's a good thing. I think it will advance the genre. I think it will will be an enjoyable experience. Um, yeah, I just need to uh, work on it. I need to get the start of the game in and in and going and a demo produced so that people can give me feedback on it. If you don't, when you're writing a game, if you don't produce, you don't have anything. And right now, I haven't produced anything in a couple of months. So, um, I need to get working on that. And, uh, and I will. But yeah, the next two weeks, this coming week, I'm just going to rest. Week after that, I'm going full ham on the Feldhold Ruins and the opening sequence of Sarah the Shield Mage, um, the introductory level, as it were. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed watching. Um, I'm, of course, going to be broadcasting again in two weeks, about 8.30, 8.40 p.m., so uh, definitely feel free to join me. If you have anything you want to say, I watch my YouTube account, The um, the Asvardual Project, like I said. Um, and definitely a, a heartfelt thanks to all of you, to everyone who's watching, whether you're logged into Twitch or not. I really appreciate it. The support I've gotten on this project over the last few months has been... Um, has been really awesome. I'm glad I made the choice to start doing these uh, bi-weekly um, dev live streams. It it started off as a experiment that I wasn't sure where it would go, but um, I think I made the right choice. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and call this an episode. Hope you've all enjoyed watching. This is the Asvardo Project, and as always, until next time.